Welcome to How Do You Heal? I am Dr. Tori Jo Hanks, and today's guest is the legendary Patricia Diorio. Oh, I say legendary because you are. You are. Um, if you don't know, Patricia Diorio is well known for her thought provoking interviews from Joe Dispenza to Deepak Chopra to just simply acknowledging the existence of science and spirituality. I'm, I got to say, I, I have been a fan since at least 2018. And this is a complete honor to, for you to be here. Um, now, for my guests, I know there are so many things that you do with the quantum counseling to your tarot to just amazingness of the books that you have written i see that you're coming out with the i am the word soon no 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 no, no not I yet oh <laughs> you're taking me down from the pedestal a little bit <laughs> uh oh <laughs> no i haven't written a book i'm writing a book i'm writing my writing book. it oh however i work with a book um quite diligently and i have for the last seven years you know when we're on a spiritual path, and I know that you, you've been on yours for a while, Tori Jo, we, uh, we come to these mm, places where, you know, I, I call it kind of like shaking my fist at God going, okay, so I've been helping a lot of people to deepen their spiritual lives and to become aware of, this, of the connection of science and spirituality. And, I, you know, what's next for me? I want to know what's next for me. What's my next level? Okay. And I, I did that on my 70th birthday in 2015, and a book came into my life that has been life-changing, and the name of the book is I Am the Word. So I work with this, ah. along with the Torah, and my, and my different storytelling skills to really make my points. That's really the components of my work today. And uh, my, my work is called Align with the Divine. Because oh, I, I know that that's really the essence of who we are. We are divine beings having a human experience. And I feel very passionate and very committed to helping people not only deepen their spiritual awareness, but deepen their uh, move, let me just put it this way, move from believing to knowing that we're divine. Oh. A belief is, belief is a thought. Right. Yes. It's a, you can you can believe something. You can believe something that's not necessarily true. Correct. Correct. Yeah. But Sky's can, blue. No, it's purple. Yeah. 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 Right. But a knowing is not a thought. A knowing is a belief. I mean, a knowing is a feeling in the body. A knowing is a feeling. Like if I said to you, "Do you believe your name is Tori Joe Hanks?" Yeah. You'd say to me, "What? What are you crazy?" Uh, <laughs> well, of course it is. That's my I, name. <laughs> so, believe you're a woman? Well, no. What a silly question. Of course, I know I'm a woman. Yeah. That's the kind of knowing that I've come to in my life right now, of knowing that we're all divine beings having a human experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, my motto, going back to my first television show in 1996, was we're spiritual beings having a human experience, and that came from Pierre Teilhard de Chardin who was a Jesuit priest, a French priest, um, who was banned by the Catholic Church for the audacity of even insinuating that we were one with God, not separate from God. Um, and that is a huge, gigantic distinction for people because okay. still a lot of people, even people in the spiritual conversation, think that God is out there, up there, separate from us, calling the shots, when in fact, we are an aspect of that God, we are an aspect of the all that is, the unknowable, unnameable, ineffable, we are a part of that, like a cell in the body of God, like a sunbeam is to the sun, we are to the all that is. Yeah. Unknowable, unnameable, ineffable, all that force, source, call it what you will, we are a part of that, we can never be separate from that, which then of course leads to unity consciousness and this idea that there is no separation except in the ego's judgment so my work since since has my work for the past especially 26 years has evolved to this place of helping people understand that uh that we are one with the divine 
There's no separation. We are God. And in this body of work that I do, this book that I work with as a text, I Am the Word, it's a channeled text. And I've done a lot of channeled work. I did eight years of Course in Miracles and many years of the Abraham work. Have you heard of those? Yes, yes. So, I mean, I, I, I appreciate the fact that there are indeed guides, masters, teachers, angels that are working with us from the other side. And the authors of this book called I Am the Word um, identify themselves as ascended masters who are here now to help humanity through this transitional period. Oh. We are in the midst, Tori Jo, of the paradigm shift that I had been talking about all those years. And I have to tell you a funny story. My son, who's 52, called me up at the beginning of COVID and when we were really in, into it, into what was going on. And then the politics of the time was also really rough for us to take. And he said to me, mom, I have to hand it to you. We're in the paradigm shift, you called it. And nice. you know, this, this paradigm shift it's not an easy experience for us. We need as much guidance as possible. Bruce Lipton, you're familiar with his work. Yes. Oh, yes. I was fortunate to hear him do a, a talk um, shortly after COVID was really making its mark with all the deaths and the illness. And he said, you know, I'm, I, I'm almost embarrassed to say that I want to celebrate what's going on right now. He says, I'm, we've been waiting for this shift for all these years. He said, now we're in the midst of it. And he gave the greatest metaphor that I love to give. He said, humanity is like the caterpillar, the gluttonous caterpillar that has eaten all the milkweed leaves and okay. stripped it through there, and now has receded into the cocoon, into the chrysalis, where it is breaking down and breaking down into that mushy elixir that is going to result in but yeah, a gorgeous butterfly. Oh, yeah. So I think humanity is in the chrysalis. It's, it's, it's breaking down into this mushy mess yeah. that will result in ultimately in the monarch butterfly. So we need to go through this now. And it's tragic what's going on in the world and, and the Ukraine. Oh, and it is. Yeah. It, it, truly, it truly is. And I feel like it's really a part of this breakdown that humanity has to go because it's a level playing field. This is not about Europe and the United States or the Middle East. And this is about every one of us. This is about everyone. It's about humanity coming to their knees with this understanding that there is no separation, that we are all one humanity, that we are one we are one and we are one with the divine, which is why my new program is called Align with the Divine. And that's what my work's about. I truly want to help people move from believing to knowing. And the knowing is just like knowing our name. Yeah. The, the guides in, in the work say, you cannot not be God. You cannot not be God. <laughs> so you can deny, you can deny that you're God, and that is the true atheism, when we deny our true identity. But say, wouldn't that be more ego, trying to say that I'm more than? Um, or I'm less than? Either either way you would go, it, ego is, it, for me, ego tries to tell me things that I know yeah. aren't true. Well, you know, we, we wear this, we wear this mask, we wear this mask, I wear the Patricia DiOrio mask, you wear the Tori Jo Hanks mask, you know, people wear this mask of who we think we are. And, and most people, most people, the majority of humanity go through life thinking they are who they came in as. Okay. Right. I would say that on a soul level, we come in and we choose a lifetime and we choose it. We choose our personality. We choose it all so that we can learn whatever lessons our soul wants us to learn. You know, so each lifetime we're about learning lessons. Yes. But when we can come into alignment with being divine when we can do that then there's no learning there there's just being there there's just being in that space and our life unfolds magically you know this i had um michael beck was on my show uh, in my second series and he said something i will never forget he said the spiritual work is the hardest work we will ever do we will ever do but once we've accomplished it, once we've mastered it, then we're home free. 
And that's really what I want to offer my students and, and the people who are interested in working with me is to be able to move from uh, all this intellectual, spiritual conversation about, um, about spirituality, about spirit, to wait a minute, we don't have a spiritual life and a secular life. We have one life. And in that one life, we're about, we're, to me, it's about being in alignment with our divinity. When we're in alignment with our divinity, then we're going to be able to manage our humanity. Otherwise, the ego mind personality is driving the bus. Right. Yeah. And, <laughs> and we have to deal with that. We have to deal with that. And the human experience, the human experience is not perfect. You know, when I began my speaking work, I wrote a speech called Confessions of a Perfectionist because I've been a perfectionist my whole life. And I'm not saying that in a positive way. <laughs> It's been, it's been very difficult. The irony of it is, Tori Joe, is this, as spirit in the body, as the divine manifest in who we think we are, we are perfect. As spirit, we are per perfect. We are perfect in an imperfect world, in an imperfect body, in an imperfect experience. We, to bring perfection to the world is limits our ability to fly. It limits our ability to just... And you know, you tie it right into healing, tie it right into healing. Healing our bodies is definitely within the can of possibility for us humans. We can heal our bodies. And I'm not in any way taking away from allopathic medicine or uh, complementary medicine, integrated medicine, all the different medicines that are now coming to the fore, especially integrated medicine. People are looking at complementary and, and um, alternative ways to, to, to heal themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's important. You can't just take one thing. You have to really have, look at the whole picture. Oh yeah. It's an experimentation. It really is an individual experiment. One second. Forgive me. Ooh, <laughs> I love it when brains come up with something. <laughs> I have a book to show you. So this Ooh. is the book. <gasps> okay. I am the word. And you know what? We are the word, aren't we? Yeah. Aren't we the word? If, we, if we are of God. Yes. If what we say, okay, and how we feel about what we say, and then the words itself, those are the components of manifestation. And they've shown this now scientifically, oh, that yeah. we're in our reality, all right? Joe Dispenza says, it's the electricity of our thoughts combined with the magnetism of our feelings that are the component that cause the manifestation to happen. And Deepak Chopra said in, re in regard to subatomic particles, that the subatomic particles are the uh, stuff of creation. Subatomic particles are fluctuations of energy and information in a field of all possibility. That's the quote. Uh, subatomic particles are the stuff of creation, the energy and information in the field of all possibility. Field of all possibility is the yeah. universe. Unlimited potential. We have a thought. I'm fully self-expressed in my soul's work. I'll take that because I am and I love my work. Fully self-expressed in my soul's work and I combine it with an exciting, happy feeling about, for example, being here today talking about it with you, you know, and I put that out into the field and it happens. Of course, it's happening now, but we can apply, we can use any example at all. If we have a negative thought, oh my God, how am I ever going to deal with this relationship? Is never, oh, I, mean, I can't mm. do that. Negative thought combined with sadness, fear, anxiety propels that thought into the field and boom. It happens. And when you add the word to it, because we are the word, we are the word, the word is vibration, uh, then, you know, that's, that's what happens. The manifestation happens. Now, I'm going to push the envelope with you here a little bit about healing, because this is your wheelhouse, healing. Okay. 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 I'm working with a client who has stage four cancer, breast cancer, that's metastasized to her lungs, mm. other parts of her body. So uh, allopathic medicine would say, no way. She's not, she's not gonna make it. There's just no way. Right. However, I'm working with her and we're working with this book. And this is how it shows up. I work with my guides. I, in meditation, I work with my guides. And one day I was meditating and I, I said, okay, so is Rachel gonna make it? And this is what I heard. I heard, yes, she will live. And it will not be because she healed 
your body will be because she changed her cells. She transformed her cells. And this is really pushing it because you have a diseased cell that's bringing the body out the door. You have a diseased cell. That cell doesn't, that cell just, when you're, when you're really about changing the cells mm -hmm. through, through your word, through speaking it, through speaking, through speaking into creation, the, a healed body, a healed body. But they made the distinction in the meditation that it wasn't about healing the cells, it was about transforming the cells, transforming them. That's a huge distinction because when we change the cells, we transform the cell. What do we have? We have a new cell. We yeah. have a new body. We have a new body. So she is in a way, and I adore her, is my, I don't want to say test case because it sounds callous to say that, but I know that this woman, 52 years old, beautiful, spiritually awake, all of it, is healing her body. And she says to me, Patricia, people see me and they go, they ask me how I am and I don't know what to say to them. I said, you tell them the truth. I'm getting better and better every day. So she's been doing this work rather diligently with me and it's really about her owning her word and moving to this place of not just believing in her divinity, but owning her divinity, owning the fact that she is God in form showing up as Rachel. And as she owns that more and more and works with it every day, and, and if you want, I'll share with you about how one would work with the book in this way. Uh, I know she's gonna do it. And she's not gonna heal the cells. She's gonna transform the cells. So if people that are about healing can look at this idea of actually changing the cells of the body, changing them and transforming them to be made new. I don't know, I was raised Catholic and I was never a big biblical scholar and, I, and I'm certainly not now. I'm not a Catholic now. I'm a, I'm a spiritual being having a human experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I remember the quotes, like, and the beginning was the word and the word was God. The word was with God. The word was God. He was with God, alluding to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus saying things like, behold, I make all things new. Behold, I make all things new. So what we're doing when we're aligning with our own divinity, our own Christ itself, when we align with our own Christ itself, we're vibrating at a very high frequency. And when we speak intentions into the field about transforming the cells of our body, healing, we can say healing the body, but the, the guides made a distinction. They said it, not, it will not be because she healed the body. It will be because she transformed the cells. She changed the cells. She will have a new body. Behold, I make all things new. Yeah. I mean, every I, seven, eight years, isn't it? That new cells replicate and we have new. I, it, it, the word, I mean, I'm, I'm, I love getting goosebumps in conversation. Uh, to, to think about, I, I, I am very strong on flipping the script, rewriting my story of what I tell myself. And this seems very strongly towards that realm where you have to be very diligent and intentional on the words you use internally as well as externally, but being able to speak that out, it definitely changes the vibration. Well, it does because people think English is the language of the universe, it's not, frequency is. Yes. Frequency. frequency is the language of the universe because everything, Einstein, everything is energy vibrating at a frequency that determines its density. This is not philosophy, this is physics. Mm -hmm. Einstein. Regarding matter, we've been all wrong. Matter is energy whose frequency has been so lowered that it comes into form. So we see things that are in the material world. But if we looked at them under a dark field microscope, they'd look like empty space because the subatomic particles are so far apart because it's vibrating so slowly. Our body vibrates at a higher frequency and we're less dense. Our thoughts, feelings, and words also frequency vibrate at a very high frequency and we cannot see them but they exist and they're impacting the subatomic particles in the field all the time. 
And I wish I could say that the majority of thought forms that humanity has today are positive, but I, I do not think that they're positive. So all of that negative energy is going into the field. And right, you know, with everything that's going on in Ukraine, and, and we're still not out of the woods here regarding uh, COVID and all the political changes that are going on in our country. Um, we, it, it, it is so important for us, Tori Joe, to keep our thoughts positive. And I have issues in my life and things that I deal with. And I find myself, you know, wanting to go down that rabbit hole. My ego and I says, oh, we're going to go down this rabbit hole today. No, nope, not going down that rabbit hole. Thank you very much. I'm changing, <laughs> changing my thought. I'm changing my thought. When we change our thought, we change our outcome. When we change our thought, we change our lives. So I've had audacity on Facebook. I'm doing Facebook live every week. Did you know that? I did not. Check, check it out. Check it out. Okay. Facebook, uh, on my Facebook. I'm not a techie person, but I've been doing Facebook lives every Friday since November. Wow. And just be outrageous like I am now. And this is what I said. I did a, I did a piece on love. Love. Love is not an emotion. The guides tell us love it when i say the guides i'm just saying information from the higher realms right the guides tell us that love is not an emotion it's a frequency it's the highest frequency that we can vibrate at and still sustain a physical body think about that oh. love is the highest frequency we can sustain in the body and still have a body right oh, wow. and Love is, is the frequency. When we're in the frequency of love, we're in our Christ itself. We're in our higher selves, essential selves, whatever you want to call that aspect of ourselves that is divine. We're in that. Right. What I was saying is we cannot go wrong with love, but it can't stop with those people that we think deserve the love because we're all connected in this web of life. Everyone is divine. We're having a human experience, including... Putin. Yeah. And, and all the so-called bad guys going all the way back to Hitler. You know, they are they are also God in form having a human experience that is where they just lost their minds to evil thoughts and power and greed and and you know the seven deadly sins to be trite. They've just forgotten who they are. So our work, your work and my work, and people that are watching this, our work is to align with our divine selves. Our work is to, to align with the truth of who we are. In 1996, when I began the show, the paradigm shift, I knew I was in trouble when one of my crew came over and said, Patricia, what's a paradigm? Oh, no. So, you know, that was 20 something years ago. Yeah. Now, not 20 something years ago, but a, a while ago, but now, we have to start giving it, we, I think we, we can choose to stop giving it lip service and really own it, really, really own it. Our spiritual life and our human life should not be separated. It shouldn't be secular and spiritual. And I did that for a long time because I had a 23 oh, year career in social work. That had and to be like draining, separation. And well, that's where people are. People have a spiritual practice, right? But they kind of keep their spiritual life separate from the other things that they're doing. Most people, I'm talking about most people, even people that have a, that are consider themselves spiritually conscious, I think for the most part, they give it lip service. Uh, yeah, I've, I've met several that are like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, so my work, and I'm pretty passionate about it, as you can tell, I'm a wild woman, is about helping people align with their divine selves. And I work with, I work with the Tarot, as you know, and with my own counseling skills, because that's where my degree is, and my life experiences. But I would have to tell you, excuse me, that this little book, yeah, I can't recommend it enough. Okay. okay. It's not for everybody, because you know, there are many, many paths to awakening. There are many okay. paths. So oh, many, yeah. So many principles out there and so many spiritual protocols out there. This is one path only, and it may not, you may not resonate with it. I have clients that don't resonate with it and they go, oh, and I'll say, okay, don't, you don't have to read the book, but just consider that you have this 
unlimited power within you as a part of God, as a part of the divine, as a cell in the body of God. And if you can align with that and own that and move it from believing to knowing it, then you'll perform miracles in your life. Oh, yeah. I, I do really believe that with all my heart. And my dear, my dear Rachel, I think she's going to do it. She is going to heal. Coming back from the brink of death, I'm serious. Coming back <sighs> from death. And it's interesting because she, when she was diagnosed with breast cancer two years ago, she went, I'm not doing any allopathic medicine, nothing. I'm only doing alternative. That's it, all alternative. And she did. And right she got worse and worse and worse and worse to the point where the tumor enlarged, metastasized mm. her lungs. So all, she's been very, 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 very ill. Now she's turning it around. She's turning it around with her intention, with her, with her mind, with her intention, with her thoughts, with her words, with her feelings of, I am God. And I know that I can, I can heal my body by transforming my cells. So the reason why I, I am so passionate about this body of work is because this is what it's about in a nutshell. It's about ascending while you're in the body. It's about ascending while you're in the, the body. thought. I mean, that's like a goal, right? For most is, is to just ascend, just to be good enough and do the right things and learn the right lessons. And, and then to, to think that, that, that goal, it doesn't need to be a goal. It's, it's something that can happen. It is. Yeah, it, guess what? It is happening. It is. I believe that people, that humanity is ascending. I believe that we're all ascending. And I think the distinction is where people are in their level of awareness, okay? So you and I are ascending at a, a higher space, a higher rate, let's say, than but I'll just use the ridiculous Putin, you know? So he's also ascending because he's a part of humanity. But there right. are those of us that are ahead of the game. And this, this is the key that I was waiting for in oh. my own personal life because I, the, the guides tell us that as you do the work, as you do the word work, there are nine books, by the way, nine. Wow. Yeah, this, is, this is the seminal book. This is the one that, that, that forms the foundation. Okay. But as we do the work, we are literally raising the vibrational frequency of the body. There's that word frequency. We're raising the vibrational frequency of the body more and more and more. And we're moving toward what? We're moving toward vibrating at the highest frequency we can hold which is the frequency of love yeah. and, and they call it the, the true self. Let's call it the true self. Like people that. hear the word Christ itself and they freak out because they think it's going to be a religious. No, religious. Yeah. Christian. And it's not, you know, Jesus last name wasn't Christ. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. I don't mean to laugh or trigger anyone. Christ is an office in the divine. Christ is a Christ is uh, is as close as we can be to the all that is. The Christ is the second. I believe that the second coming. You know how mm -hmm. the conversation about the second coming. I believe the second coming is us waking up to our own Christ, to our own. Because that's what Jesus told us: greater things than these you'll do. You and I are one. I am one with the Father, and you and I are one. He said this, but we hung him on a cross. Yeah. About death, you know, instead of life and ascension and resurrection. I believed, being raised Catholic, that we ascended when we died. When we died, when we dropped the body, our soul ascended. I think that's where most people think of ascension. No, no, no. We're ascending now. And mm -hmm. anything that we can do to expedite that ascension process is what I'm up to. And there are many different ways of doing it, you know, but this is the most powerful vehicle that I've discovered. And I've completed the nine books and it's like, I can go back to this book and open it up to a page and read something I never read before because they're living documents. Oh. They're, living, they're living documents. So as people work with them, their vibrational frequency is raised. 
and as people work with other protocols that are out there too like i said this is not the only one right yeah there's many i mean we, well we have to kind of have several different because it has to be so individualized for us to actually get it right right so i, I you know i honor all the paths to helping us unite uh, Thich Nhat Han just died and I just changed my outgoing message on my phone to this. Oh. Enlightenment is when the wave realizes it's the ocean. <laughs> that goes back to your the, the God theory. It's, we are. We are. On the, we're the wave. When the wave realizes it's the ocean. And knowing and realization are used synonymously in, the, in this particular body of work. Um, to know that we're God is to realize that we're God. And it sounds blasphemous to say this. And I have coaches that say, well, Patricia, you can't go around saying, you know, you know, you're God because it's arrogant. I said, I get that, but it's not coming from arrogance. It's coming from a place of having arrived there where there's no doubt in my mind of who I am. My ego, my personality wants to tell me, yeah, well, Patricia, look at this, that, and that, and that, and that, you're still in your subconscious. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a human being. I'm going to have my human experience, which is dealing with my shit, just like everybody else has to deal with their shit. All right. You know, I mean, really, we're, you know, we're, yeah, in a, we're all human. We're all human. We're right. human, having a human experience. But if we could really get that we're spirit in the body, that we're spirit in form that we're energy, energy, vibrating at a frequency that gives us this form. And then we come in and we take on this personality and ego mind personality that we need to have, because otherwise we wouldn't be able to navigate the world. We need to have an ego mind personality. But I feel that we reach a level of awareness of who we are when we can use the ego mind personality as our friend that we can we can employ the ego my personality and i mean that employ it to yes. serve us instead of driving the bus you're right driving That's me down that rabbit hole you're actually going to clean the windows instead while i drive <laughs> exactly it's a good metaphor it's a good metaphor. right I've been chatting away here. Is there anything you want to ask me about this? I know that. Well, <laughs> I, I would I would say besides, I, I wanted to get into how people could reach you and what you're doing. I wanted to get into, and we've gone into through the the your book, I Am the Word, and your tarot of how you, how is that your main go-to on your personal healing? How How do you find healing? Oh, yeah, I've been seeing those. <laughs> They're always here. Okay. And it, um, listen, cards are pieces of paper with pictures on them. Card, there's no power in cards. That's all. Pieces of paper. And there are millions of tarot decks and millions oh, of yeah. um, what are called, um, they call them what? Um, oh, gosh. The word is escaping me right now. But there, there are so many different ways of, they're called divination tools or yes. oracles, oracles, right? The truth is that we're the oracle. Yes. If we're God in form and we're divine beings, we're the oracle. Do we have all our questions? Absolutamente. We have all our questions answered. We have them in here. We know the answers to our questions. Ego mind personality doesn't know. Ego mind personality is locked in how it thinks it's supposed to be in this human experience. Right. But if we can align with our divine selves and then ask a question, I'll, I could, I'll ask a question right now. I'll ask a question. So, um, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I, you want me to ask this question, but I will. How is Tara, how is Tori Jo responding? How, what is she feeling about what I'm sharing here today about being God? Can I ask that question? Go for it. Okay. I'm going to pick a card here. As a matter of fact, I'll have you pick a card. Tell me when to stop. Ask the question. I'll ask the question. How how you're feeling about that? And then you tell me when to stop. Stop. Ooh, I love this card. <laughs> Devil's play, which uh -huh. is your work is your play and your play is your work. You plurk. So, <laughs> oh, okay. so you, and, you and I are plurking 
in our human experience where we know who we are, we're playing and working at the same time. So yeah. I, love, I love that I had the courage to have you ask that question because if it showed up as negativity, I would go, okie dokie, where am I? No, go? that's that, that <laughs> card is fitting. It is fitting because it's like, yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm I'm agreeing wholeheartedly. And like I already, I, I whispered in there, we might be triggering some people, but we love you <laughs> as we continue. Because, you know, triggering to me, if I trigger someone, that means I have sparked an inspiration for change. That's how I take it. People get mad at me, but. Mm. Our, triggers, our triggers are like red flags that are showing up and saying, okay, if you're triggered by this, it's not because of the other person. You can, we can't turn around and point our finger at our brother or our lover or our husband or our friend or a son or whatever it would happen to be and, and think that they're the cause of what we're feeling. If we get triggered, we have to go like this. Wait a yeah. minute. Oh, it's me. I'm triggered. Right. I've been here. So this is a gift for me. Every encounter is, every encounter is a teacher. The, 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 this is a gift for us to, to I'll say, now what is it that is triggering my feeling of fear around this or this feeling of not good enough or unworthiness? And I think that not good enough and unworthiness, no matter how much money people have on the planet, unworthiness and not good enough is epidemic and endemic in the human experience. Because oh, yeah. we, we come in and we, we, have, we lose connection based on all the conditioning and programming that goes on as young children, we come in as remembering that we're part of divine, that we're God, that we came in, you know, to have this human experience. But then we get plugged into the conditioning, even of in utero, what was, what was my mother's pregnancy like? Mm -hmm. Did parents argue? Were they listening to classical music or, or um, heavy metal? That makes a difference. Oh, it does. Know, oh, were yeah. they eating McDonald's or were they having, you know, salmon and salad? All of this makes a difference. And, and all of that goes into, according to Bruce Lipton, all of that goes into our subconscious. We're like a little psychic sponge. <sighs> and all of it goes in, and, it's, and, and the subconscious cannot, cannot determine positive or negative. It just all goes in there. And then the programming, if it's continued, if we have a school teacher that tells us, or you're stupid, or, you know, I mean, a lot of times we have authority figures as children who say things or do things that change our lives because mm -hmm. we take them good or bad. Way. Yeah, good or bad. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's like positive thought, positive feeling, positive experience, negative thought, negative feeling, negative experience. So we're these little, we're these, these, in a way, uneducated masters because we're divine if we don't know we're divine it's not an excuse for right not, for, it's not an excuse. we're still creating our reality if we if we if we don't know the whole understanding of how we're creating our reality it doesn't mean we're not doing it we're doing it anyway and that's why people's lives are negative that's why they're always the glass is half empty oh, yeah why is it always happening to me yes yeah. exactly exactly instead of taking full responsibility when we can take full responsibility for our divinity then that's the ball game you know then we're up oh that's to a bat. huge awareness that yeah. really is then we're up to bat hitting home runs because we know the game of life is to know who you are and to know what you are you're your divine being having a human experience that shows up as your body your ego mind personality my friend who co-authored, I mean, co-hosted my show with you, Stu Zimmerman, he used to see call this, the meat suit. We wear this meat suit. I know? love that. I, I, I have said that for years. <laughs> yes, it's so, it's, it's so true. It really is. That, that, let alone that, that meat suit is so engulfing, you might say oh, sometimes. It's what we know. And I tell you, when we get in pain, when we're sick, nothing like pain to get our attention. It's really mm -hmm. hard. And you know, my, my, my heart goes out to my friend, Rachel, because she's in a lot of pain. Oh and yeah. And then discouraged for her to do this work regardless. I mean, she, you know, she said to me, Patricia, I've been digging my heels in around my spiritual life for my whole life. It's like, I just haven't really been able to get there and be integrated with it. But now this is it. This is the end game. She said, I know, I know what's going on here. I'm not blind. I see what's happening here. 
and I'm jumping in with both feet and I'm coming into alignment with what you're saying. Mm. So she, and, and she had a huge shift when I said, you're not healing the cells of your body. You're changing the cells of your body to new cells. That's huge. New cells are going to have a whole new body and the cancer won't be there. Right. And she got it. So she's getting better day by day, a little bit every day. And I, I really do believe that she's, she's going to be my poster child in this. I do. That's amazing. Oh, my energy's with her though. And that cancer takes so many people and they get stuck in the, well, I can't do anything about it. And so for her to step and say, you know what, actually I can. <laughs> and like, yes, I want to have balloons and ticker tape. You know what I mean? That's if more people could could understand that knowledge and take it to complete heart, I, I do believe there would be a change in our medical profession. Listen, when people take to heart that we're divine beings having this human experience and own their divinity and live life from that place, right? They're going to find that they're going to be more positive. They're going to be vibrating at a higher and higher frequency. And when you do that, guess what? negative shit can't find us because we're vibrating at a higher frequency than the negative stuff yeah. so what happens is it bypasses us and this includes karma if we have karma negative karma from the past that we're completing in this lifetime but we have the wherewithal and the knowledge to know who we are and come from that place of knowing that that karma just bypasses us we we just don't even yeah. have to because because you've raised above it you're not yeah. sitting in that vibration right so I'm working on a new, a new speech. It's going to be my signature speech. And it's um, the science behind success frequency because it's the vibrational frequency of where we are. Now, when I, when I do a speech, I'm in Toastmasters group. So I have a, a very um, heterogeneous, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I have, I have the, the micro and the macro in the group. I've got people oh. that are super conservative and very religious. And I've got people, a very few people that are kind of in alignment with where I am around spirituality, but they're in the minority. So I have to be a little bit careful. You know, I'm not gonna be saying, well, you know, we're, we're divine beings and we're God in the body and that's just it. I'm not going there because I really have to assess my audience all the time. When I read your note, Tori Jo, about, hey, Go dive, take a deep dive, be willing to just bear the soul. I thought, okay, great. I said, yeah. Can I listen to it? Because you know what, darling? This is who I am. This is who I am. And I am not the only one no. that is aware of the fact that we are God in the body. There are millions of people. I mean, if you go look at all the different websites that are out there and all the different platforms, you know, the shift and all the work Deepak Chopra is doing and Marian Williamson is doing and Greg Braden and Bruce, Lee, all of them are saying the same thing. Right. I'm not saying it quite as blatantly as I'm saying it. Well, they're being careful of their audience. Like you have to be. Yeah. Be of audience. But what I'm saying here is I, your, your viewers, your listeners, give it some consideration that you can in fact be a divine being having the human experience as who you think you are. And if you could look at your life as an opportunity to remove the mask of the suffering person, whether it's a physical suffering from, from the body problems or mental, emotional, whatever, if you can really remove that mask of the suffering human and you're going to shine as who you are and you're going to be vibrating at a higher frequency and your life is going to change. I mean, I, I can tell you so many stories of the clients that I've worked with since this book came into my life seven years ago, whose lives have dramatically changed, including mine. Hmm. Including mine. Does this mean our, all, all our stuff is handled? No, those rabbit holes are still there and our ego, my personality tries to coax us down there. We have to be vigilant. We have to be vigilant for our thoughts. We can't afford the luxury of a negative thought anymore. Well, at least not to, we, we can allow it, I, I would think, but we can't sit in it like we used to. It's like, yep, okay, bye. That's what I mean by Instead love. of, oh, yes, no, I really like that. That's hurtful and that takes me down. So I'm going to hold on to that for a while. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a different perspective, definitely, for staying in that vibration for a while. It's hard to sit with it longer. I mean, you know, it, it, for, for me, it is anyways, the farther I go and the more I, I 
shift my perspective. It's harder for me to stay in that low frequency. You know, I, you know, that's, that's why, you know, how sleep and, and meditation is important. Inner work, inner work, the inner work is really, really important. I have had such a day today. Oh my God. My computer is, my computer is probably, problems i my people are getting my emails i don't even have any uh, nothing is showing up in my scent and nothing you got nothing from me today yes yeah, no so i thought what am i going to do right before this and i thought well i could do this that or the other thing but what i did my schedule changed so i meditated i went in and i did a meditation for a half an hour and I just let everything go and I just went and sat with my my thoughts. And I don't know about you, but for me, meditation, in the beginning of learning to meditate, you know, my monkey mind was there with all my to-do lists. And now my monkey mind kind of taps on the plexiglass that surrounds me in my space. I like and, that. Ian, let me in. But I don't. I'm able to really move to that place of, of inner knowing. And coming back to the Tarot, we have an inner knowing. We know. We know. But our ego mind personality doesn't know. Right. right. So that's why we use the tools, so that our ego mind can get a glimpse of what our spiritual knowing already understands. Exactly. So when I see a client, I say, look, I'm not a fortune teller, and cards are just pieces of paper with pictures on them. But if you go within to that place in you that is divine, that is the true self, and say, okay, I'd like to know about my marriage. I'd like to know about my relationship. I'd like to know about this health condition. And just ask that question. And then you're, gonna, you're going to intuitively pick a card face down. Just let your left hand, associated with right brain, yes. nonlinear, let your left hand pick a card intuitively. And I promise you it's going to be the perfect card. And then my job, is to interpret it, bringing every, all of my gifts to the table, what I know about the person, which doesn't have to be a lot, because okay. card will speak volumes to me and how I can best coach them in, in response to that question. Hey. How I work. Oh, that's phenomenal. Oh, that really is. That really is. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm noticing time, and I, I want to be respectful of yours as well as the people listening. Um, so we've got your, oh my gosh, so many. <sighs> Align with the Divine, you said podcast is coming out soon? Yes, I'm working on a podcast right now called um, Conversations with Women of Spirit, which is a, an oh. anthology that I've been invited to participate a chapter in. And the book has been published. Now I'm interviewing the women who are participating. participating. <sighs> so I'm doing videos every week, but I haven't got the, podcast technology down yet oh that's so yeah i get you <laughs> I can sit on a camera whether it's a zoom camera or a camera camera and i can interview people that are you know about what, what i'm totally loving and have just have to be like falling off a log i love it it's what i do but it's the technical stuff it's all the stuff that needs to happen to bring it out digitally and that's really where what i'm working on right now i'm working with a fellow that's helping me with that oh wonderful so it will come up you know, it will come out in the next, I don't know how many months, but it will come out. Ooh, just excitement to look forward to it. That, that's awesome. That is, that is great. Um, so I'm going to put all the links uh, for your Get Conscious Now and your, just your website. You said it is under construction. So just be warned on that. But more things are happening. Um, I guess the final question, put that on my pen. In, in your darkest moment of the no out the no just just engulfed in your meat suit you might say compared to where you are now what well, would you needed to hear what would i have needed to hear yes relax darling hmm. you're a divine being you cannot not be god that's who you are and when you align with that the world is magic and you are creating the magic. That's what I would have said to myself. That's what I say to myself now. I'm going to say thank you for saying that to yourself now because <laughs> we need you. <laughs> we need you. 
So let me just <sighs> mention three, let's mention that I work with people in three ways. I work one-on-one -on -one with people that really want to have that private time with me, that one-on-one -on -one for an hour once a week. Okay. And um, I work with small groups, people that are interested in perhaps being in a small group of six, four to six people, keeping it very intimate. And I'm also going to be launching soon, hopefully, a membership, a monthly membership. Um, just once a month for a nominal fee. And um, what I'm going to be doing is taking people through this book. And I know that sounds like it's minimal. That's where I got it. Because I was doing research on your website going, oh, this book looks phenomenal. And then reading along, it's like, ah, okay. Now I yeah, get it. The book is the text that I work with. It's not my book. It's our book. It's everybody's book because it's really about us increasing the vibrational frequency of our body so that we really move from believing to knowing. That's okay. The, you know, so those are the three ways I work with people. And uh, if you want to get in touch with me, can I give you my, uh, can I put my email here? I can, I can add your email. I'm going to add as much information as you want. I figured I'd be putting your Patricia D Um, let's see where, how else we can we get you the, you have, do you want people to know about your center of the heart peregrine shift classes? Is that what the one-on-ones you were talking about? No, I'm not doing those now. No. Not doing those now. That's why it's under construction. I wanted to check. <laughs> okay. So more of just an email then you want people to email you, reach you out that way. Yeah. Patricia at Patricia Diorio.com. It's okay. Patricia at Patricia Diorio.com. My name and if anyone's interested and I'm going to, I'm going to make this offer. If any of your listeners, viewers, are interested in um, meeting with me, I will give you a little complimentary reading. Oh my goodness. A little mini reading and, uh, and see where uh, that might lead us. Oh, wow. So you, now, now, you, now they have to show up. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can't pass that by. <laughs> you really can't. That is phenomenal. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you so much. I was, I got to take notes. <laughs> this is well, just... So much, and thank you for uh, recognizing me and for acknowledging me. And I feel very, um, I feel very honored by the fact that you shared what you shared at the beginning of this because it came out of the blue. And <laughs> yeah, I'm a fan. <laughs> I've been following Patricia Diorio since at least 2018. I mean. Everything that you have done is something that I want to do. And to have you on this show is just, it's like that, that pure manifestation. And it's showing me and basically affirming to me, yeah, keep going. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. It's like, oh, <laughs> so thank the greatest, you. The greatest gift I could give you is just check out the book. Oh, I will be. Oh, yeah. Check out the book. It's not the only way, but to me, it's been the most profound way for me to really move from believing to knowing. Oh, I love the the different aspects and perceptions. So I will definitely be learning something new. Yeah. Well, wow. this has been wonderful, and I've Thank done so a, lot of, a lot of motor mouthing today. I hope that you feel. Oh, that's like what we're here for. <laughs> that's what we're here for. <laughs> I I have been engrossed and enthralled the whole entire time. So thank you so much. Yes. <sighs> okay. Thank so, you. We'll have you on my show when I get it up. Oh, you're going to have me squeal. <laughs> okay, well, until next time, thank you for joining me and Patricia DiOrio on How Do You Heal. Thank you all for watching. Thank you, Tori Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.